Hello and welcome to the Radical Imperfectionist Podcast, a show where together we work to embrace who we are, to grow into our own allies, and to become a source of empowerment for ourselves and those around us. This is Holly Ann Casper, your host for the Radical Imperfectionist podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, It's been longer than typical for me getting this episode out. I've been taking a much needed sort of sabbatical or break for some grounding time and for some time with my family. And it's been really amazing. We need to take those breaks and it can be really hard to do that. But I've had some breakthroughs and it's been awesome. I'm I'm so grateful for each and every one of you as you listen and you engage with me here and on Instagram or YouTube or whatever the case. I'm just really grateful. Okay, let's get into it. Today I want to talk to you about an idea that used to really uh, trigger me and that I've wrestled with a lot. I want to reframe it and open it up and make it even more broad, diving into it as I really love to do. Uh, As you probably were aware when you saw the title of today's episode, I want to give you not only permission, but encourage you counterculturally to let yourself go. You see, our society has all sorts of expectations of us as people that are tied to the way we should live and be and a tremendous load of crap about our bodies and how they should look. Typically, letting yourself go seems to mean that we've allowed ourselves to, or our body to become less valuable somehow by allowing it to grow and age or change in a way that's not further toward this cultural ideal, whatever it may be. This ideal tells us that if we have, I don't know, stretch marks, rolls anywhere, (laughs) cellulite or wrinkles, or whatever happens as we age and grow and have babies and age again, Um, whatever I'm missing here, then we've let ourselves go and have become somehow less worthy of love or acceptance. I'm taking this deeper here because as I said before, this isn't just a lie having to do with our bodies. And so many of the lies that we believe about our bodies They're much deeper. They have to do with thoughts about our worth and our worthiness and lies that we've clung to for a long time. And it's not just women. We're supposed to follow society's ideals, supposedly, right? Of how we should look and how our homes should look, of maybe what we should drive for some people or how well our kids should behave or how they do in school. Whatever it is, according to whatever measure how we should eat, whatever it is. Anyway, you get the point. The problem is that the very idea of letting yourself go implies that you've held yourself captive. And it's true. I believe there is no more true statement for women today. It's not just women again, but as a woman, often speaking to women, this is my focus here. I love my non-women people. (laughs) I'm just speaking my way here, so bear with me. The problem is that when we are holding ourselves captive, we're resisting reality and truth and clinging to thoughts and ideas handed to us or formed out of our brain's attempts to survive, which cause us to feel fear and shame and pain and lack of control, which perpetuates those very feelings. So for me, this has played out in a lot of areas of my life. It's played out in the way I was always a chameleon, presenting the side of me or morphing and molding myself into an assumed or more acceptable version of myself, hiding my flaws as much as possible, becoming agreeable and oftentimes a doormat in order to find maybe love or acceptance that I didn't think I deserved. I'm not slamming myself and I know that I have strengths and I've had strengths, but these are, you know, the way that I survived and the way that I thought I was keeping myself safe. It played out in the way I thought I had to not only behave, but also the way I thought I needed to look. I became driven by fear and held myself trapped under these expectations so that my body was never enough. And I was always working against my body, loathing it when it would get sick or when it wouldn't perform in ways I wished it would, or again, look like it should, according to what I thought 
would, um, you know, give me that love and acceptance. I had always been fairly skinny, um, but I had the tiniest little boobies and no hips and bigger thighs relative to my hips and, you know, shorter legs proportionately. And I never felt enough. I would wear heels to appear to have longer legs, maybe sometimes, or just think less of my legs. Maybe I would try to get tan so I would appear to have more flawless skin or whiten my teeth. I didn't do all of the things, but I didn't accept my body for what it was, let alone ever listen to it. I didn't even know my body was trying to communicate to me. I was so sidetracked by trying to be enough. I got really sick when I was uh, young, my early 20s. Um, and I got sick a lot and it was really hard. And I knew a lot of it had to do with the emotions that I was trapping within me. I mean, obviously nutrition and other things play a role, but I was just constantly sick and the situation I was in, in my life, it makes sense to me. I had a health scare and that just propelled me to pursue perfect health even more than I had been at the time. So I worked out a lot and I tried to eat perfectly and learn about what that looked like and everything was contradictory, but I tried my best and felt good when I did, but I didn't understand my, why my body wouldn't change to be what I thought that it was supposed to be. You see, this is where the lies start. They start where we are and they tell us that all of who we are is not enough. We compare our bodies, our personalities, our strengths, our weaknesses, and any other part of our inherent self or anything on the outside too with what we perceive in the outside world. The lies tell us that we're not enough. The lies have us comparing and we don't even know that when we respond to these lies, we start to cling to them. They become a measurement of our worth. They trap us. I did this, and of course, all of us have help for those voices. The voices of those around us can help to enforce the lies um, and fuel it with more lies, or the voices around us can help us to disarm those lies and replace them with truth. Before my husband, and I've shared this in other past episodes, I was with a man for six years. I was with him since I was a teenager, and I had a lot of insecurity in who I was already. I clung to what he said, and I measured myself against his words. They became overwhelming, and they worked to really trap me within those lies. He would say things like, don't you ever want to look pretty? Why don't you dress like a girl? Or if you cut your hair, I'll put a bag over your head. He'd say, real women know how to cook and take care of their man. Or don't wear red, take off that red, it makes you look like a whore. He said insane things. (laughs) And it sounds crazy hearing it. And when I think of this, I realize how terrible it is. And I'm not even sharing a little bit of like a a large portion of it. Um, I'm not saying this for pity at all because for years I stayed with him getting weaker and weaker and handing him my power and I don't shame myself or pity myself. I did have a choice and I allowed myself to be victimized. I, I had to forgive myself before I could even begin to heal from that relationship. It was a lot. I, I had also had to apologize to myself for allowing the lies of someone else to become such a powerful voice in my life. The truth is, however, that there are lies that float around our culture similar to this, even if they're not so blatant. They might be hinted at or implied, but they're there. Additionally, if you've experienced treatment like this, I'm not saying anything about you being bad or weak. If you are a victim of a circumstance or situation experience that's terrible, uh, my heart goes out to you and I empathize with you, so please don't take that wrong. I'm just saying we don't always know when we're in those circumstances that we have choice. We are trapped in the thoughts and the lies and it can be really, it's like (laughs) we're hypnotized. Um, We do the best we can truly with what we have and what we know and we believe. And until we really start to hear truth and believe it, we can't break free of the lies. 
I'm not judging anyone, sister, not one way or the other. I hid from these for a long time. Or when I would share stories of any of this long after, I felt like I had to caveat it with whatever I thought would make it understandable because I really didn't want it to be something someone would judge me on. And it's a very vulnerable platform um, to share or to feel judgment on. And I already deeply disapproved of myself. But I'm not controlled by that anymore. I don't need to be liked for my story or even for who someone perceives me as being. That was a hurting man who hurt me out of his pain. And I let him uh, hurt me out of my own pain. The experiences I have from my time with him have actually helped me grow so much and they've given me so much compassion and understanding for women who endure that kind of treatment or worse. And it also sparked within me this passion for us to break free of that. So I'm really grateful. It dramatically changed the way I related also to my mother and empathized with her. And she went through pain at such, I feel like a deeper level than I did. You see, I've let myself go. I've let myself go of the story that I used to tell about who I was. I have let myself go of the idea that my body has to look a certain way or isn't allowed to have hard times or wrinkles or bumps. I've let myself go of the ideas that I need to punish or reward my body according to how it's fitting society's expectations. I've let myself go of any and all expectations that I'm aware of that have kept me trapped. And they don't all have to do with your body. Um, I'm working to continue to free myself every time I learn of a new way that I'm allowing myself to be run by lies that produce shame or fear or pain. I no longer allow myself to be controlled by ideas that I'm, I'm failing because I can't control it all. And instead, I'm surrendering what is outside of my control and focusing on what I can do, but still not trying to do it all. When we're holding ourselves captive, we struggle to feel free because we aren't allowed to let ourselves go. We have an illusion of control over what scares us while surrendering the power we have in choices to move ourselves forward and actually free ourselves from the chains of resistance of the truth and clinging to what the lies have said it all means for us. When we let go of the past, of those around us, and of the current situations in our lives and focus on the choices we have now and going forward, then we release our shackles and we're set free. What we need to do then is to deal with the challenging situations in our lives by accepting them first. Acceptance is the opposite of resisting. Accept the past. Accept who we are. Accept who you are. Accept the people in your life for who they are. Accept what your life is right now. When we do this, we free up incredible amounts of wasted energy, energy that has been consumed by trying to resist ourselves, resist our lives, our circumstances, and cling to preconceived notions of what it all means or should mean. We not only free up this energy, but we also gain incredible perspective. We're able to then step back and see our circumstances with fresh eyes and now with that energy to take action in owning our choice. The actions we then take work to reinforce our freedom and our power and to move us in a direction that we want to head rather than keeping us trapped or moving us in the wrong direction. Okay, so as usual, I want to talk about what has been helping me as I let myself go. So hopefully you can free yourself as well. First, I had to reflect on what I needed to let go of. This takes time and there are a lot of layers. You'll become aware of one truth you're struggling to resist at a time or one identity you are clinging to because of a lie you're believing. As you work on one layer and find growth, another will emerge. The growth will compound. You'll find momentum. Sometimes you'll feel like you're maybe hitting a speed bump and maybe as though you're backtracking a little bit, but then you'll have a breakthrough. 
You have to persist. You have to keep yourself connected with people that help you to reflect and grow. And you have to start getting comfortable with the feelings beneath it. Resisting feeling what's inside is what's really going on. And you need to start letting what's inside out. Give the thoughts and feelings a voice. It doesn't empower the lies when you let them out. It unveils them so that you can see them and reflect on them and actually make a change with them. When you see the thoughts that are going on within yourself, then you can dissect that thought. You can reflect and try to see where it comes from and how it makes you feel. Oftentimes, these lies are tied to the way you see yourself, to your worthiness. How do they make you feel? What would it feel like to not have those thoughts? What would you feel, what would you like to feel instead? What insight? can you see when reflecting on those thoughts without stepping into unhelpful perspectives? What helpful insight can you see as you read what you have written? Do not filter to yourself, girl. Do not judge your thoughts. The thoughts are there and there aren't usually consciously chosen thoughts. Your brain is working with habits and filters And you have to be able to accept that it's not always going to be pretty and it doesn't reflect your worthiness. Byron Katie says, when you resist reality, you lose, but only 100% of the time. Your thoughts won't change until you know what they are and see your choice. They will continue to fester and produce more fear and shame and pain and other emotions that cause you to struggle and lead you the wrong way in life until you see them for what they are liars that are keeping you trapped. Once you've dissected the thought and asked yourself these questions, maybe written them out and reflected on all of it, then rewrite your story. Rewrite what you were talking about from the beginning with your new lens, with your new insight, seeing that you have a choice of where this leads you. The way you tell your stories predicts the way your life continues and the stories that you continue to have. If you tell your stories from a victim narrative, for example, your life will continue to be filtered from that lens and through that lens. If you tell your stories from an empowered perspective, owning your part in your life and your choices without shame, but with empathy and compassion and gratitude for the lessons that you get to learn from every experience, then none of it is wasted and the trajectory of your life dramatically changes. So once you've done this, you will see that your life will start to change a little. But don't be discouraged when another layer reveals itself. Don't allow it to overwhelm you. Be grateful as this is another opportunity to work that muscle and continue forward. Everybody has layers. All of us are working on them. You will continue to grow closer to who you really are, unhindered by lies and living as authentically as you can, but it will never be perfect. This is also part of the not resisting or clinging. Stop resisting who you really are. Accept that you have weaknesses and accept that you aren't perfect. Stop clinging to roles. I'm not saying your roles don't matter. (laughs) Not at all. I'm saying your roles do not define you. Your roles will constantly change. When you cling to your roles as a part of your identity, then when those roles change or are threatened in any way, the result is just these shattered feelings of emptiness and unworthiness. If your value rests in being a mother, for example, when your child moves out on their own, you will struggle more than you need to in order to find out who you are beneath that. You won't do this perfectly either. By the way, I'm sure you've figured that out. And that's just a reminder here. You will still cling a bit to roles likely and it will still be challenging, but start to reflect on these ideas and work on your thoughts around your roles and identity. Practice rewriting your thoughts. Practice those thoughts that are helpful over and over again and accept the whole process. It will not feel easy. It will be hard. Accept this wrestling all as a part of it. Don't let it scare you into thinking that you're not making progress or that you're failing. You see, you are doing enough. Do not try to tackle it all at once or think it should be a quick fix. It's about baby steps, small steps compounded one at a time over time. 
nobody, even all of the other perfectionists who you think are perfect, are doing it all at once. Just this awareness and simple reflection will render results. Just be persistent and don't give up. Give yourself time. Give yourself compassion. You can visualize yourself accepting the bumps in the road. Visualize yourself living your life with peace and loving yourself and taking one step at a time. Write down three things about you that you hide or are resisting accepting. And reflect on what it would feel like to actually fully accept and embrace those things. To not have that angst. To not think maybe your thighs should be smaller. Or you should like to organize. Or you should homeschool. Or you should teach your child this or that. Or not to think you need to be skinnier. Or you need to change the way that you're easily distracted. I'm just saying... Um, I'm obviously not anti-growth here. (laughs) So hear what I'm saying. The problem is, as recovering perfectionists, we tend to see whatever is a good idea as yet another item on our to-do list that we must do and do perfectly. It racks up more and more tasks until we are overwhelmed and drained, and it shoves all the good things out of our lives because there's no room for all of it. There's more good than we could ever do. We're not supposed to do it all. That's why there's so many people. We're all supposed to dance to our own beat and to learn more moves, but we can only do one thing at a time. Um, Well, you're doing enough. You're amazing. Your dance is beautiful and so are you. Don't try to do and be everything. Let yourself go, sister, and relish in the beauty and freedom that surrender and acceptance provide for you. I am in this with you, and I'll say that a thousand times over and over. You're not alone. I hope you have an amazing week full of acceptance and embracing your life and your power and leaning into really being more and more you. Until next week, this is Holly Ann Casper, the Radical Imperfectionist. Okay, real quick, you guys, there's been an exercise that has been incredibly popular on my podcast and in my videos called rewriting your story. I've used this exercise and it's been awesome. So I created a freebie to jumpstart your journey in that area. I want to send it to you, but in order to do that, I need your email address. So to make that really simple, you can text the word imperfect to the number 22828. Again, text the word imperfect to the number 22828, and you'll get a response back asking for your email address. When you respond with your email address, you'll be added to the email list so that I can keep you informed. And again, as a bonus, I created this worksheet. It's a super popular exercise. I use it regularly, talk about it often here on the podcast, and I want to send you that worksheet as a gift. So when you subscribe, I'll send that worksheet and the instructions right to your inbox. Okay, let's get back to it. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you'd like to stay current on whatever is posted, you can subscribe on iTunes. You can also head over to theradicalimperfectionist.com for other resources. Have a wonderful day.